the whole lifeblood of Gardner draws from the Cobbacy stream. I'm Dawn Thistle. I am the Special Collections Librarian at the Gardner Public Library in the Community Archives Room. Dr. Sylvester Gardner was one of the proprietors who happened to come up here, check out the lay of the land, um, and was heavily involved in, he would come up here every year. And, um, but when he saw this spot, he wanted it <laughs> because of the Cobbacy Stream. In its final mile down to the river, down to the Kennebec River, in its final mile, it drops 130 feet. 1750s, the Kennebec proprietors, wealthy businessmen from the Boston area, started to, they, they got the, the rights to this, um, the, the Kennebec purchase. The first white settlers had come in the 1600s, but they didn't last. So there had been this, like, a, a century where there wasn't really a lot of effort to settle up here. So in the 1750s, um, they started to offer out, um, you can have this parcel of land if you come up and develop it to a certain extent. And it just balloons like mad. And in 1819, the population was just over a thousand people. In 1820, one year later, it's over 2,000 people. Uh, in 1830, 10 years later, it's almost, it's 3,700 people. 1840, it's over 5,000 people. And by 1845, it's 6,572 people. They saw the potential for eight locations for dams. And at its peak, the Coppicey had eight dams. Um, they didn't last forever. Some of them washed out. Their locations have changed minorly over time. Um, and the industry at each dam has changed with each decade, too, for the different needs. You'll find forges, foundries, factories, grist mills, sawmills, steam mills. The first paper mill was built in 1806. Multiple mills, multiple factories. Yeah, just harnessing that power. The fish populations were incredible when they first started settling here. Like the stories of, you know, a woman wanting a, a spinning wheel or something, so she just went out with a, a barrel and dipped it and got enough alewives to <laughs> buy what she wanted or something. We were talking 1700. But I do know, yeah, the dam certainly impacted um, fish populations. Um, I know that there was controversy further on up the stream that these dams prevented uh, the lively fishing industry that they had, say in Winthrop and so forth. And there were arguments um, arguing to, to break up the dams and allow the fish back up and um, they were immune. Well, I'm Tina Wood, and I live uh, in Gardner, in a little neighborhood right above the stream. My great-great-great-grandfather in Winthrop was a, a selectman and had actually, there was a fish committee who petitioned for uh, dam removal because the people in Winthrop were used to having abundant fish um, for their families. That was 1792 that he and his brother were working for Fish Passage and it is now 2018. It just came to me because there were so many people who cared about the stream that we needed to be organized and upstream sounded like the right name. It's hard for people to be excited about fish because it's hard to see them. And art is such a good way to see something as powerful as migration. And we painted fish, we hung fish all through our town. What does three million fish look like? We have like 20, 20 sculptures throughout our town. We've done origami fish folding mobiles because the mobiles kind of show how the fish move. We work with NOAA. Um, we work with Kennebec Land Trust. Um, we've worked with Trout Unlimited. Um, 
the Nature Conservancy, uh, the Department of Marine Resources. We work with the schools, um, the high school and AP biology class um, runs some data collection for us on alewives in the stream. I feel like I'm speaking for the fish. Um, and so I'm really mindful that when the fish come back in the spring, did I do enough to make it better for them? And I haven't really, because they're still stuck at the dam. Oh, yeah. But um, well, my name's Dean, and I like fishing for stripers and and smallmouth bass. And this time of year, the the Lys are dropping down out of uh, uh, Pleasant Pond and, and the stream up by the dams. And when they drop down, the bigger fish come up to eat them, and I'm after the bigger fish. Right, right now there's a huge amount of bait that is dropped down from up above, from upstream, and they're eventually they'll, they're headed to the ocean, and the little alewives, and, uh, and they go out in, they'll go out in groups in, in a school, and, uh, but right now they're just, they're packed right in here right now. Millions of them. <laughs> yeah, it's become special. It's, it's a neat place. You're right in downtown Gardner and you never know what you're gonna pull out of here. Pike, guys have been catching perch on fly rod, white perch, big white perch. They've been catching white-bellied catfish. They're in here by the hundreds after the el eating the outlaws. The alewives swim on, they never crawl. Uh, in, in a river against the wall, they never crawl, never crawl. Uh, at the dam, they look rather small, but that doesn't matter at all. They look like perfect creatures, but they never crawl. Uh, these alewives use the veins, and some might die young. I wish to, they would swim around the dam somehow. The alewives swim on, they never crawl, they never crawl in a river against the wall that never crawled. I'm John Bean and I'm a member of the New Mills Dam Committee and we're here today doing debris removal on the dam, make sure the dam's operable for the winter and we're also trying to establish good downstream passage for the alewives. They are um, stocked in Pleasant Pond by the Department of Marine Resources. They're shooting for about six per acre. Usually it's somewhere in the order of five or 10,000 fish a year. Almost certainly hundreds of thousands of, of juveniles that have hatched from eggs in June and grown for three months in the, uh, in the pond and are now four or five inches long and are ready to head back out and take their chances in, in the wild Atlantic. Oh. I work with the group upstream, I'm a volunteer, and we've been doing this once a year now for five or six years. Just to welcome the fish home and have the people of the city of Gardner understand the resource that's here in the river that they can benefit from. The whole concept here is to develop community support, to build friendly populations, not be threatening, not be confrontational, but to just support for our river. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Almost three out of four cars now are giving us waves, so it's pretty exciting. This is community support that's here. Good morning, young lady. 
Upstream's goal is to create fish passage on Cobbacy Stream for migrating fish. That is our 